Tonight, it's a potential playoffs preview matchup as 18-year-old phenomenon Bailey Hodgins in the Atlanta Empire hosts star middle linebacker Whitney Palmer and the number one ranked Austin Sound. It's the X League coming up next. You've got your shot. What are you going to do about it? All that's relevant is the seven of you on that field at any given time. You have been waiting so long to play this game. Here's the hit. Oh, man. We're going to war. Because we're not here just to win. Oh, what a hit. Huh? We're here to dominate. Oh, my goodness. We're here to take that number one spot. He now throws it back. Turn it on the afterburners being chased. Oh! Everybody's getting their blood, sweat, and tears. Time finally throws, and it is gone! It's a big shot. Throwing in zone, it is caught! Rolling to the left, looks down the field. Open, catch made, touchdown! You've given your heart and soul, so why not give it your heart and soul when you go out there? Gas South Arena, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, site of our much anticipated week four matchup. It is the Empire and the Sound live from the Peach State. And we welcome you inside our X League broadcast booth alongside Elaine Gurig. I'm Kit McConico. And Elaine, well, this is the matchup. Everybody's had circled on the calendar. It is one versus four. Austin, the visitors, number one team in the league. The question is can Atlanta take them down? We know one thing it's going to be electric tonight. It's going to be an intense playoff atmosphere tonight, Kit. A lot of storylines going into this game. The one grabbing the headlines is the debut of Atlanta Empire young gun, 18-year-old quarterback Bailey Hodgins. She has an extensive flag background. Will that background translate to the highest platform of the women's game? We sat down with the Georgia native earlier to discuss her X-League debut. Going into my first ever tackle football game, I would say I'm pretty nervous, but I'm also very excited and very confident in who I am and who my receivers are and who my line is up front. I know I can put the ball up there and they're going to go get it. Um, our coaches have prepared us for this day over the past few months, even the past few years. And so I think all of the jitters and the nervousness will be out after I take that first hit. I'm going to get back up and we're going to be ready to go. A potential playoff preview matchup. It's the Empire and the Sound coming up next. X-League Week 4. Said Austin will start things off. There is Michelle Angel, the signal caller for the Sound. 5'9", 140 pound quarterback out of Laguna now, Hills, California. Back, 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 right? back in that victory over LA. She was 4 no, of 9, 131 no. yards no. through the air. Four touchdowns on four complete passes, no, no interceptions. First play from scrimmage. Angel looking for space, and she's going to be hit. The pressure from the Empire brings her down. Who else but Jessica Salazar? What a great opening play right there. You can look. She looks out to the side. It's not there. She pump fakes, and coming in from that linebacker position, she was fantastic in her first game, and Salazar picks up where she left off. Salazar, the Miami native, a pure football player, says Coach right, Robinson. What a performance she had in week one there against Chicago. Second leading rusher, second leading receiver. Led the team with eight tackles and an interception. Second and nine, it's going to be a pitch in the backfield and hit for a loss. Atlanta all over the ball carrier, nowhere for Sydney English to go. And that's going to be Christina Beltran. Oh. Excuse me, that is number 33, ZZ Green, coming up from her defensive end position. That Atlanta defense, they are young but developing quickly, led by those defensive ends, America Valdez. You've already seen ZZ Green in the middle, controlled by tackling machine Salazar. Brings up third and long for Austin. We'll see if they're able to get this snap off in time. Uh, offense. Did we get a receiver warning from that ref? All sides. Receiver team. Number 11. Five yard penalty. Dude, Repeat. On, you third down. At least give a warning. And a third and long just got Allie, third and longer on that play. Line, An unforced error. Austin had eight penalties in their very first game. I know that that was going to be a focus from Coach Olvera. Drop, 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 and he's got to be right? upset that he's got one already here in their first series. 
Austin, when you and I spoke with Coach Olvera earlier this week, he said they wanted to control the clock, time of possession to run the ball. They've got themselves in a third and long. To the air goes Angel. Overshot her receiver, and it is going to bring up fourth and 16. You can see on the replay, there's going to be two receivers for Austin running vertical routes, and actually only one of them really turns around, and the ball's kind of halfway in between. Really not completely sure who's that supposed to be. Is that supposed to be for Cassandra Bills, or is that supposed to be for Rachel Washington? Looks like a little confusion all the way around on that play. And Wayne, remember, Austin is without one of their stars, Chris Daniels, an ankle injury, and that is a huge loss. In week two, had three touchdowns, one receiving, two pick sixes, led the team with 115 all-purpose yards. Where is the line? Misty, what are you doing? You're on, you're on point. Looks like we have a, This will be a 30-second timeout. You're on point. Looks like they're going to punt the ball, and I think that's the first time we've seen Austin punt this year. Apparently a little confusion on the special teams, and they had to spend a timeout. I know a coach doesn't want to spend a timeout on something like that. Get in! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lock somebody in front of you. Don't let them turn. Punt! Count it! If you can't do it, poison! You see Dane Robinson obviously upset. He was able to force the punt on fourth down. Whitney Palmer, the do-it-all star, back for Austin in her own end zone. A high snap, Palmer comes down with it, and a good kick, this one. Will bounce just on the other side of midfield, and that is where the Empire will take it. A loss on the return. A good starting field position for Atlanta at their own 20. And you don't see this very often. 71, Whitney Palmer, she's the punter, and she runs down the field and makes the tackle on this play. That's a heck of an effort from number 71, Whitney Palmer. Here she is, the snap's high, she does a good job getting up, kicks it down the field and track her. She's running all the way down the hash. And right there, the punt and the tackle. Don't see that very often, Kit. Palmer, the Huntsville, Alabama native. This is actually a closer commute for her than to Austin for the practices. A handoff on first down, a nice run around the edge and a good pickup in the hands of Salazar for the Empire. You and I were talking before the game, Kit, that Jessica Salazar is going to be a big part of this game, and we felt that they might have the opportunity to kind of pound the rock. That Atlanta offense, Julia Face Guy dominated her opening night debut. Six foot one, a matchup for any defender. 18-year-old quarterback Hodgins making her debut, as we mentioned. And one of her top targets, sure to be Lauren Ziegler. The definition of a clutch receiver is the future Hall of Famer. A good gain of four on first. Another handoff, Salazar outside, good for the first. And brought down after a gain of eight. Just a simple off tackle run to the outside here, but again, establishing the theme that there was on first down, a run from Salazar. Not long run, not exceptional speed shown, but a first down earned. Lane, when you and I spoke with Austin's Coach Olvera this week, we asked what the key on defense for his team was, and he said it's very simple. We have to bottle up Jessica Salazar. And so far, they've had trouble doing that. They have indeed. Two carries, a new set of downs for the Empire, and a go back to Salazar. Salazar again, all the way inside the five before she's finally brought down. Austin, that defense, Whitney Palmer, the anchor of that defense up front. He says she is just a pure ball player, the embodiment of a middle linebacker alongside star defensive end. Sydney English does it on both sides of the ball. They expect a breakthrough performance from her. They are going to need a big game from Anna Garza with the absence of Chris Daniels. Second and four. Again to 39 they go, and she is stood up, tackled by Cassandra Bills, maybe a gain of one. This is the first time that someone's met the running back actually at the line of scrimmage. Cassandra Bills comes off from her cornerback position, and that is a great tackle, racking up the legs there of Jessica Salazar, and that's what it's going to take for Austin to be successful and bottle up Salazar like Coach Joe wants to. Bills, the Central Texas native, 
Tied for second on her team with five tackles in that week two victory. Again to Salazar, bounces it outside. Salazar powers through for the touchdown and the Empire are on the board. Another off tackle run to the left. This time, Cassandra Bills does not defeat the block. That's a great job out there by the veteran Lauren Ziegler blocking on the edge. And it's a rather easy touchdown for Jessica Salazar. And it was a steady diet of number 39 for the most of that drive. They continue to go to the well that was Salazar and she was rewarded with the touchdown. Two point attempt for Hodgins, empty backfield. Looks to throw, flushed out of the pocket. Hodgins will tuck it, and across she goes. Eight to nothing, Empire. This is a good play right here to get a young quarterback some confidence. It's a simple option. It's a phase of Kai heading to the right rear corner of the end zone. There she is. She's covered, and now it becomes a run. She's got one look. It's a phase of Kai, or I'm going to tuck it and run. She tucked it and run, and that's a great play, great adjustment on the fly there from the young signal caller. Great start for Dane Robinson's side, who he said, and I quote, we want to get ahead early and stay ahead. Fantastic start for the home team. Now what is the response from Austin? They had to punt on their first possession, couldn't find anything, and this is going to be a tackle for a loss of Fezekai makes the hit in the backfield. Fezekai leading that Atlanta defense, and well, they certainly have it in spades. Pushing that young side. Erica Valdez, ZZ Green, two of those young defensive ends. Salazar, the two-way player, and Fezekai as well. Angel, the quarterback keeper, around the side, picks up four. This is a play that every offense in football has right now. It's just a zone read. That's a fly sweep fake to the right. The defensive end has got to stay at home and be ready to play the quarterback. And America Valdez didn't quite do what she was coached to do on that play. Sunday, Sunday. Third. And five. Angel to the air. Angel complete for the first down. And here goes Cassandra Bills. Bills across the 10, five, touchdown. Cassandra Bills cash money responds for the sound. Coach Overa was talking to us about hitting some inside routes. Well, here you go. That's an inside crossing route, and Cassandra Bills is going to do the rest. A very accurate throw from Angel. A couple missed tackles, and Cassandra Bills takes it to the distance for a receiving touchdown. That's her third receiving touchdown so far on the year. Sunday, Sunday. One of the best wide receivers in the league. Shows Sunday. off the hands Go. and the speed. Austin looking to tie it, two-point conversion. Angel sends this one, intercepted of Fezekai in the end zone. Fezekai read that one the whole way. Uh, 2.42 remaining in the first. And Atlanta on top of Austin, eight to six. The sound and Angel responding with the touchdown to Cassandra Bills. Lane, if you're Austin, that's what you want to see. They came back down the field. They responded after conceding that opening touchdown. Absolutely, and I think it's going to be key right here. What adjustments did defensive quarterback coordinator Garrett Marcantel, what adjustments is he going to make to try and slow down Jessica Salazar? Back comes Hodgins, 18-year-old out of Canton, Georgia. She was two-year starting quarterback for the second-ranked Sequoia High School varsity flag program. Right? 
That uncanny resemblance to a young Dakota Hughes, but coach says maybe even better than Hughes at this stage of her career. A handoff up to the first down and then some, another big gain. Lindsey Ezel this time for the Empire. When you watch Austin's defense on this play, you'll see it on the replay. No one's attacking the line of scrimmage. They're all moving backwards when the ball snapped, and it's three, four, five yards down the field before an Atlanta Empire running back is even being touched, and that's going to be hard to stop anybody on offense playing that passive. That was the speed back, Ezel, giving a break to the power back, Salazar. That is a thunder and lightning combo if there ever was one. First and 10 at the 22. Salazar again, picks her way across midfield and Salazar turning nothing into something except four yards after contact, another big gain on first. When you watch this replay, the defensive end is gonna get reached right there at 39. She's supposed to set the edge, it's not there, she's not in the picture, and right now, this is all too easy for Oregon left, Oregon left, eight sets on one-on-one, -on -one. ready? Wayne, you and I saw Austin in week two, Oregon that Oregon offensive Oregon explosion Oregon. when they took down LA Oregon. in the Lone Star State 50 to 19, but they weren't really tested. They're being tested yeah. here tonight. Their defense needs to step up. Ezell again with the carry, first down, across the 10, five, touchdown. Down Atlanta. And Lindsay Ezell, easy as you please, with her first TD of the night. Penalty, but it's going to be declined. You're going to get a double team on the left defensive end right here. And she's like a panda bear on roller stage. She's moving backwards the entire time. And it is all run all the time and very little distant resistance so far from this Austin South defense. They are going to have to make some sort of adjustment. And I'm going to start with more of an attacking style on defense. They're sitting around reading too much. They're waiting for things to develop rather than force the issue. That's exactly what Coach Robinson in Atlanta wanted. He wanted to establish the run early to help their rookie quarterback, Ezell, for the two-point conversion, and it's 16 to six, Empire. What an impressive job running the ball on this drive. Atlanta, I mean, at this point, they don't even have to throw. You talk about something to be able to get your offensive newcomer quarterback, Bailey Hodges, confidence. Well, how about not having to make her throw the ball? She's not forced to do anything that she's not comfortable hey. with yet. Wait, and what's it's going the ball? very, very good early for Atlanta. Austin, they're going to have to make some adjustments, and they're going to have to do so quickly on defense. Running game for Atlanta, flexing its muscle early on. Angel, first and 10. 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Angel to the air, complete, no. Through the fingertips of Rachel Washington. And with the absence of Chris Daniels tonight, Rachel Washington is a receiver that's gonna need to step up. They're gonna need someone to pick up the slack from Chris Daniels and her ankle injury. Hey! We're gonna need to see a little more from the Austin wide receiver crew. At the end of the first, it is the Empire on top of the sound, 16 to six, Atlanta running this one. Welcome back, start of quarter number two here at the Gas South Arena. Glad to have you with us, week four of the X League. Dane Robinson, well his game plan, it has worked perfectly thus far, Lane. When we talked to him Tuesday, he said, we want to run the ball and take the pressure off. Rookie quarterback, Bailey Hodgins, he has certainly done that. Hats off to that offensive line. A lot of times they don't get as much credit as they should blocking. So I'm going to make sure I give them the credit they deserve. They've done a heck of a job in that opening period. Two-headed monster of Salazar and Ezel doing the rest. Austin, second and 10. Angel underneath, oh, couldn't link up, had Bills, just couldn't come down with the catch. This is a good job by the offensive line picking up these three rushers. They're gonna pass off this extra blitzer and they pick it up and they give quarterback Michelle Angel a little bit more time, almost complete. So that Atlanta defense you see there, 
Salazar, Valdez, and Green. Third and 10, Austin to the air and well over the top of the intended target. Again, trying to find Bills, and she was blanketed by a phase of Kai. I think what you have here is a receiver. If she thinks she can beat her deep, she's going to take the route vertical. But Cassandra Bills couldn't get on top of a phase of Kai, so she cut her out short. Quarterback didn't read it, so some miscommunication there between hey, Angel three, and Bills. Second, fourth, and 10 of the game for Austin. The first time they punted it away, they will go for it here. Early stages of quarter number two. Glad to have you with us here on Fan Pass. And it's actually gonna be Angel punting things away, and this one is going to go out of bounds, not nearly the distance they were looking for. We'll see where they mark it. It is gonna be great field position for Atlanta. Kid, I think this is gonna be a, about a 10 yard punt right here. They went with the quick kick. I like that idea. It gets the pressure off of the, your punt rush team, but I'm sure they are expecting for more than 10 yards down the field. And as you stated, this is going to be very, very good field position for the Atlanta Empire. And I'm just gonna throw it out here, Kit. I think they're gonna run the ball. <laughs> It's been a steady dose of Jessica Salazar and Lindsey Ezel thus far. Really getting that rookie quarterback in her X-League debut, getting the legs underneath her, getting some confidence. And again, they will hand this off. A short gain picks up two. And Austin doing a better job that time, beating Salazar at the line of scrimmage. Exactly, Kit. That's exactly what I was going to say. Watch Cassandra Bills. She comes under the block at cornerback. She doesn't stop Salazar in her tracks, but she gets enough of her so the rest of her teammates can come and help tackle Salazar. It usually takes more than one. That's what Coach Olvera said. He said, look, we don't know that anyone can bring her down one-on-one. -on -one. We've got to bring numbers when 39 for the Empire has the ball in her hands. The Miami native putting on a show early. Here comes Ezel, not to be outdone. That two-headed monster just continues to impress Ezel be down inside the five first and goal coming for Atlanta. You see on the replay there's going to be a good crackback block from the wide receiver right there. Gets her on the ground and couldn't quite catch that number. Anytime there's a good run from a running back down the field and outside you can bet your bottom dollar a wide receiver's made a heck of a block. Zell, the former high school track star, collegiate cheerleader. Gives you an idea of her athleticism for the Georgia native. The rookie as well. Already impressive in her home debut. Another rookie. Just come back, come back, come back, come back. Pressure's Set. been taken off her shoulders. Hodgins drops back to the air and wisely throws this one away. When you look for things in a young quarterback, you look for them to see when they get in trouble, are they gonna run around with a chicken with their head cut off, or are they gonna be calm, look for a receiver, and then at the last minute throw this away? Well, this is wise beyond the years of 18. It's not there, she's not gonna eat the ball, she's gonna live to fight another down. Get rid of the ball, don't take the loss, and now you still have excellent field position. Hodgins under center, Ezel bounces it outside, oh, Met. And they will say she got across the second effort from Lindsey Ezel in her second touchdown of the night. And it is party time in Atlanta, and I don't blame them. Around the right side again, a phase of Kai with a monster block. And running right over number 11, Ali Fan. You're going to have to bring a little more than that when you're trying to attack. These Atlanta running backs, I am extremely impressed so far with this Atlanta run game. And actually, I'm a little surprised that Austin hasn't responded on defense yet. He's a great size at five foot seven, 170 pounds. The rookie in motion, they'll pitch it out to her. It has an easy path in. Does Ezel flag comes in. We will see what Jerry Wilson and his crew have to say about this one. It's going to be against Austin. The two-point conversion is good, and it's 24 to 6 ATL. Three running touchdowns, three running two-point conversions, and Atlanta is doing everything they want to right now versus this Austin defense. And Austin has got to come up with some answers because you can't let them score every time they have the ball. You got no chance 
and Dane Robinson has to be extremely pleased with what he's seen right now. Uh, the Empire fans, a lot to cheer about early on as you see the future Hall of Famer, yeah. Lauren Ziegler. Yeah. Has not been able to get involved in the passing game, but she's already made her presence known defensively. Austin with a good gain of first, a gain of 11, I should say, the carry from Rachel Washington, and that's what they needed. Something to where they're not always in second and long and third and long. We've seen quite a few of those already. And what better way to do it than bust out a good 10, 11 yard run on first down to Rachel Washington, moving the chains for Austin. Back in week two, had three rushes for a total of 24 yards to the former collegiate pole vaulter. West Texas native stays as the running back in the backfield will take the handoff. No, Angel underneath, no one there. Miscommunication for Austin. It brings up second hey, and 10. Do you want to catch the ball We've seen a couple of those run? already Good from Austin, and, and it's not to like to Michelle Angel and her quarterbacks to be on the same page. She's a veteran, she definitely knows what she's doing, but you can see the hesitation. She's holding and holding it, and you got to think there's supposed to be a wide receiver there and just. I think you're seeing uh, what happens when Chris Daniels isn't here and someone's thrust into a role maybe they're not quite ready for. The absence of Daniels, the ankle injury back in that week two game, you could not overstate how big it is. Her stats mind-blowing in that win over L.A. Complete across midfield, the 20. Bounces it outside. Here comes Washington. Touchdown, Austin. Oh, Austin finds the response. Angel to Rachel Washington, and the former Angela State pole vaulter takes it to the house. Rachel Washington runs a sweep fake to the left. Quarterback rolls to the right. Michelle Angel drops it on a dime. Atlanta, nobody home, and she takes it to the house. That is the exact response that Austin needed at this point in the game. Let's see if they can get a two-point conversion to seal the deal. Again, with the absence of Chris Bills, Austin needs Washington and English to step up. So far, Washington up to the task. This one incomplete. Austin unable to find Misty Gonzalez, the veteran tight end to the intended target. I think it's gonna be tough for Michelle Angel to find Misty Gonzalez when she's getting hit in the mouth almost immediately. Watch how fast, right there. You're asking a heck of a lot for a quarterback to be an accurate passer under those adverse conditions. So far, Atlanta flexing their muscle on both sides of the ball. We mentioned that week one performance from Julia Fezikai, the Boston native led her team with four receptions, 68 yards, three touchdowns, had six tackles in defense, Ziegler. A big gain on first, and finally getting involved in the offense is the star wide out from Tampa. This is a good run right here. It's gonna be an outside run to the right, and then you see a quick little cut back up to the inside. Good job making something out of nothing that was really there. Amazing hands, the separation we've seen from Ziegler. Big gain. And to Salazar, she's hit for a loss. Austin Tour. Whitney Palmer with the tackle for a loss. There's one of our pregame player highlights right there, Whitney Palmer. Gonna need to see more of this from big number 71, the linebacker helping out on that run game. That's what she's there for. Great job on that play right there. Dane Robinson, head coach there. He's also the defensive coordinator, the line coach. His assistant head coach, Dominique Robinson. He's the offensive coordinator in charge of the quarterbacks and wide receivers on Jody Nettles. There is well all in the act. Ziegler bounces it up across midfield, and that is what Lauren Ziegler can do. What a run from number seven. Looks like this is almost the exact same play last time, except this time the hole is actually the outside as the play was designed. Good outside move, good cut right there to make a tackler miss before the gang of yellow shirts gets to her. Two minute warning rules are in effect. Atlanta has one timeout. Oh, Two man, minutes remaining out. in the first half. And it's Atlanta leading Austin 24 to 12. Week four of the X League. Austin 
Titans coach Michael Vera. He's he's gonna have to make some adjustments at half lane. It has been a difficult first half for his team. There have been a few bright spots, but Atlanta, they have had their way, particularly on offense. There's no bright spots on defense so far for Austin, that's for sure. Two minutes remaining in the second quarter and back to a heavy dose of the run. Here comes Lindsey Ezel again for the Empire. Cool formation right here, what's called a tall eye. Three guy, uh, players right behind the quarterback. That's lead blockers all over the place. Pretty good job of stepping up there by Austin. A little better than it has been in the past. A little more aggressive. That's going to be key if you're going to stop the run. Second and six. Hodgins making sure everyone has the play call. Atlanta in no hurry here. They would like nothing better than another score before the break and to keep Austin at 12. To the air goes the rookie too tall for Julia Fazekai. This is another good safe pass for rookie quarterback. A run fake, there it is. She's gonna roll to the right. There's the big six foot one target of Fazekai. And that ball's just a little overthrown. I'm pretty sure when Bailey Hodges is watching the film tomorrow, she's gonna grit her teeth and say, ah, I'd like to have that one back. If that's on target, that's probably a touchdown. Yeah, difficult to overthrow the former college basketball players. This one is down, a fumble. Austin has it. And what a turn, just over a minute remaining. The fumble recovered by Myra De La Cruz for the sound. And that is a huge play for the Austin defense that looked like it was gonna be another steady diet of run for another touchdown. But here you go right there, it's a handoff. It's not clean from the very start. And that ball's bouncing everywhere. Maya De La Cruz from the bottom of the pile gets a huge break that Austin desperately needed to close out the half. De La Cruz, one of numerous Mexican internationals on this Austin side. She commutes not across the border, but all the way from Mexico City. And now Austin back in the hands of Angel. To the air she goes, has her target, and Bills couldn't come down with it. A sure touchdown. And that is the first long vertical route that has really been open for the Austin Shawn. And Michelle Angel puts this one on a dime. Bills beats Afezakai pretty clear and right through the white gloves and what would have been a sure six points for Austin. That is one that Bills no doubt wants back. Uh, Benji, Benji. Angel will just have to shake it off. It has been a difficult first half for the star veteran QB from the Golden State. Angel again to the air. Has her target? No, incomplete. Vicky Koenig unable to come down with it. The veteran tight end couldn't make the grab, and it's going to be third and ten. Great physical coverage right here from Keon Harrison, the middle linebacker, knocking that ball out even before it gets there. And a good stop, third down. This is a big play right here for Austin because what we've seen from that Atlanta offense, if they get the ball back, they've got enough time to score. Keon Harrison back in the lineup after being injured in that first game at Kansas City. Angel takes to off and she will run across the 15. We will see if that is enough for a new set of downs. She's looking to go deep right here, and it's just not there, it's just not there, and at some point that middle clock goes off and tells you to run, and she's trying hard to get to the first down. I think she's gonna be a little bit short. I think we're gonna have fourth and short here. Fourth and two for Austin. They will talk things over. 51 seconds remaining in the okay. first half. Listen, over here. Atlanta. Three touchdowns, they have all been on the ground. Jessica Salazar got him started, and then Lindsey Ezel with the last two. Finish the series, we're rushing too wide. Finish the series, get there, all right? Ends, Mike, strong, free, corners. I'm gonna see what they line up in, and now I'm gonna call a timeout. All right, but right now let's go Mike. We're, in, we're getting, ca sorry, cash is on call. Cash is the call, don't give up anything deep, let's go. Lane, you heard Coach Robinson saying finish the series. He wants his defense to get the stop here. They want to keep, at the very least, his 12-point advantage going into half. During that timeout, Coach Robinson was talking to his defense, 
Second time out of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. During that timeout, you could hear Dane Robinson. What he was telling his defense was, I'm going to see how they line up, and then I'm going to make a decision on that. And it looks like his decision was, I'm going to call a timeout. We're going to make sure we get the best defense we can. Our offense has plenty of time. All right, Sky, watch the shot run. He's great outside. Sky. 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 Now, of course, Coach Olvera is free out of that timeout to run a completely different formation if he wants to. That's just part of the cat and mouse game that is football. Coach Robinson rallying the fans here at the Gas South Go. Arena. Go. Can they get a stop? It has been impressive first half from the home team. Austin underneath complete a short gain to Bills. It'll be enough for the first down. Keon Harrison in on the tackle. There's a pretty obvious hold here missed by the referees. Watching the middle of your screen right there. That is a pretty darn good tackle by the center. But they didn't call it. First down, Austin. Sunday, Sunday. Set. Austin with Go. a new set of downs. 26 seconds to work with. Empty backfield again bringing the pressure. And this one complete across midfield. Bills again. And Atlanta's going to be just fine letting these short crossing routes get caught. That's part of the defense. We're going to keep everything and hold them in front of them. There's another hold by number 51, Vicky Koenig. That's two in a row. You can hear the coach asking for that to be called. Angel, this one is batted, almost picked off. Closest to it, Nina Francis couldn't come down with it. Defensive back in good position right here on the coverage. Even though she's going to be looking away from the ball, you can see she's going to disrupt that pass right there. Thought it was going to might fall right there to number 21, Rachel Washington, for a diving catch, but it was just out of her reach. Ten seconds remaining in the second quarter. Third and four for Angel in the sound. Angel again takes to the air, wide open, has her target. Washington for the first down, it's gonna be first and goal. Austin, can they get the playoff? Four seconds remaining. Great job on the vertical route right there, completing that, good job hanging on. Number seven, Lauren Ziegler came on, put a good physical tackle on the wide receiver right there. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout called by Austin. They got one shot at this. They want to make sure they get their best play in. Coach O takes the timeout. Two seconds remaining. A touchdown saving tackle from Ziegler. What does Austin have in store? Alley fan. They're asking the Minneapolis native to step up. We have not seen her targeted yet. Let's see if number 11. Finds herself in on the play. Huge Sunday, play momentum-wise for both teams. Two seconds remaining Sunday, in the quarter. Go. Bills in motion. Angel complete has Cassandra Bills for the touchdown. And for the passes that we've seen in the first half that were just a little bit off or maybe just a little bit of miscommunication, this pass right here is right on the money from Michelle Angel. What a great play, huge touchdown. Sunday, Sunday. Set. Austin Go. going for the two points. A handoff to Bills. Bills hit short of the goal line. Julia Fazekai with the tackle. But Austin, they've cut it to a six-point game at the break. A huge touchdown going into half for the sound. But it's Atlanta on top. 24 to 18 at half. Welcome you back, Atlanta, Georgia, Gas South Arena for week four of the X League. And the home team, Atlanta Empire, leading the visitors 24 to 18. The Austin Sound, a huge touchdown at the end of the half to bring it within six as we check in a live look in to the Austin Sound locker room. 
Now, drop one. That was a TD. I dropped another one on an out route we should have caught. There's the other thing. I'm calling route combos and people are going all over the goddamn place. She needs to understand where you're going to be. Because she's got 1,001, 1,002, 1,003 at best to get the ball out. You can do one of two things. You can check this shit in right now and think about your plane ride home, or you can fight back and win the motherfucking game. Yeah, fight. This is your season right here in a nutshell. You want to let it go away? Let it go away. If you don't, you better have nothing left in your tank. You better be lying in the middle of the field with nothing left inside your body because you gave everything that you got. You better be busted up, bruised, and on your way to the hospital because that's what it's going to take. If that's what we're going to do in the first half, you've got to give more. You've got to give more, period. Halftime in Atlanta. Austin trying to rally the troops. They trail 24 to 18 at the break. Welcome back to Atlanta, week four of the X League. Glad to have you with us here at the Gas South Arena. The home team, Empire, lead the visiting Austin Sound 24 to 18 at the break. Austin, a huge touchdown at the end of quarter number two as we take a live look in to the Empire's locker room. Can we all be in agreement? This game is too fucking close for no fucking reason. Yes. yes. Defense, get their shit figured out. Stop letting down your offense. Offense, run the bullet on the throat. <laughs> I expect the game to be done in the third quarter. This is why we deferred. All right? It should have come down to that. Defense, nice job on your PATs. All right? But good is not good enough. Like I said, you're feeling yourself. Football is four quarters. Offense, run the ball down the throat. When it's time to put it in there, get there. Make them pay for it. You're 20 minutes away from solidifying a lot of hard work. Do not take any down for granted. Every play matters. Coach Robinson getting the Empire ready for the second half. They lead by six. Atlanta on top of Austin, 24 to 18. Second half coming up. Half number two, welcome back to Gas South Arena in Duluth, Georgia. Glad to have you with us here on Fan Pass. And like death in Texas, Jessica Salazar gets the opening carry of the second half. You heard Coach Olvera talking at halftime. Atlanta's overloading one side of the ball, running that direction. The defense have got to step up and be more aggressive and can't give up the outside. Well, that's exactly what did not happen on that very first play coming back. And Coach O right there, he is not pleased. Blaine, one thing to diagnose it, quite another to stop it. Absolutely, they are very, very physical as Atlanta. Three seconds and short. Hodgins drops back, takes to the air, and this one batted, almost picked off. Austin couldn't come down with it. Rachel Washington, great coverage from 2-1 for the sound. Absolutely, this is an incredibly athletic play. First of all, she's giving up six, seven, eight inches to a phasic guy. She's in great position. She's almost able to jump up, bat the ball to herself, and catch it. Sorry, she was covering number three, Lindsay Izell, on that. Regardless, an extremely athletic play and great coverage from Washington. Still giving up five inches as Washington listed at just five foot three. Able to bat that one away. Third down for the Empire. Hodgins under center, Ezel with the handoff. Ezel good for the first down and up just shy of midfield. And the running game for Atlanta continues to pound, pound, pound. You could go inside or outside right now. Everyone overruns it from Austin. She sticks that right foot in the ground, cuts it straight up the middle, and it's another big run for number three, Lindsay Ezel. If it ain't broke, that is certainly what Atlanta's doing right now. That's one of my pet peeves from offensive coordinators. It's working, and they look on their playlist, and they're like, oh, my goodness, we got to do something else. Baloney, keep doing it. Handoff to Ezel, and they will indeed keep doing it. Ezel across the 15. They will actually mark her at the 13, but it'll be good for a first. And 
Austin still does not have an answer for the Empire's run game. Little bit of misdirection, great lead block from 15 of Fazekai, and another good run on first down right there for Atlanta. 16, 16. Wayne, you and I spoke about it before the game, and we knew what Atlanta wanted to do, and the way this shapes up with seven players on each side of the ball. There's an advantage in the run game if you have a running back, certainly with the talent that the Empire have in that stable of backs, and they are showing it off. They will indeed get a new set of downs, and here comes Salazar up to the 10, picking up chunks at a time. The way most team plays defense, and it looks like Austin's made a little adjustment here. They've got three linemen and two safeties close to the ball, but most of the time you are going to be outnumbered on the defensive side of the ball versus the run if you can execute it properly. So far, execution, it is in favor of the Empire. They wanted to establish the run early, get ahead, and they have done just that. Hodgin settling in in her pro debut. Take to the air, complete great catch from Ziegler in traffic, and the veteran comes down with it. And I have that as the first complete pass so far from the Atlanta Empire. Good job, congratulations Bailey Hodgkins. Hodgins, first completion as a pro, and uh, they can throw what they want to, and if not, they can just keep running, but a little throw every now and then, even if it's incomplete, it's gonna make the defense have to loosen up somewhat. 18-year-old out of Sequoia High School, the Canton, Georgia native. Her first professional completion comes with 6.07 remaining in the second half. Salazar lowers the shoulder and in for the touchdown. The 305 native, Miss Miami, lowers the boom and comes up with six. Wide receiver is going to pin cornerback of Sandra Bills to the inside right there. And it's nothing but clear sailing and going to have to be a little more physical from Rachel Washington if you're going to bring down number 39, Jessica Salazar. She's got a full head of steam. You're going to have to drop your pads if you're going to have a chance at tackling number 39. Able to complete the two point conversion. Salazar stopped short. Comes down with her second touchdown of the night for the MVP candidate. And that's what Dane Robinson has told you and I on more than one occasion. He said, look, she is one of the best players in the league on both sides of the ball, and we have certainly seen why. Absolutely. I think she's making a strong case for herself for being MVP, if not one of the best running backs in the league so far tonight for sure. I love the fact that Salazar, empowering women, doing it by example, has two daughters herself, always cheering her on. Complete, Austin able to get this one, and that is a big completion. Austin, we'll see where they mark him. It is going to be close to midfield. Ali Fan with the reception. And the receivers opposite Chris Daniels were going to have to step it up, and there's a good example doing so. Good job, good catch, good concentration. That pass is where it needs to be, fighting for those tough extra yards. Something inspirational, perhaps, for this Austin Sound. They need more inspiration on that defense, but maybe offense can get them kick-started. And apologies, that was Rachel Washington. He has been their leading receiver, comes down with another. Handoff inside, Washington with the carry, loses it, but was down before the fumble. Rachel Washington, she takes a pretty strong hit on this play. But I do believe that she is down. Here she is getting the ball. She's going to cut it back up. Takes a pretty good lick right there. You can see it. But it does look like her knees are going to be on the ground. Callie Stanley, the Woodstock, Georgia native, lowering the boom there. Second down. Washington down. Uh, 4.05 remaining in the third. Atlanta leading Austin 30 to 18, week four of the X League. Welcome back, Gas South Arena in Georgia. 4.16 remaining in the third. Austin trailing 30 to 18, and not a good sign as Rachel Washington, their star running back, she's being attended to by the trainers, came off injured. We will certainly have to keep an eye on her. Angel, incomplete again. Bills was there, but couldn't hang on. Good coverage. 
and Bills is definitely the marquee player left in the game for Austin at the wide receiver position. She's gonna have to come up with those passes, hit her in the hand, she definitely should have caught that. But with Washington going around, she was the leading receiver for Austin tonight. That puts more stress on an already depleted receiving court. Well, and you said it, Austin already without Chris Daniels, their star out injured. And now maybe Rachel Washington as well. To the air, third down and knocked away. Great work from Callie Stanley in coverage. Good job by his safety, reading a deep route right here. That ball's thrown up from Michelle Angel. It's not a bad pass. It's just a great job breaking on the ball by number eight, Callie Stanley, from her free safety position. Excellent play from that defensive back. Brings up fourth down. Big down right here for big down for Austin. Fourth and six. Austin, they need points. They found some momentum going into the break. Angel steps up in the pocket. Complete touchdown to Bills. Cassandra Bills with her third of the night. And Austin on fourth and six, five six. When your team's up against it, your studs gotta be studs. The two biggest field studs on the field right now for Austin, Cassandra Bills and Michelle Angel. Hooking up right there for the touchdown. That's a well-thrown ball right there over number 44. Nina Francis dropped right in there in a big play when they needed it. They call her cash money. The Pflugerville native just outside of Austin. And Angel lost her footing and still finds Bills for the two-point conversion. What a play. And it's a four-point game. That was extremely impressive. That's what happens when you have an eight-year veteran quarterback. She loses her footing, trips over the turf, and is still able to get that ball off. Two players linked together, mind to mind, little ESP right there, and a great improvisation for the two-point conversion. What a play indeed on the same page. And Austin has cut the deficit to four. Hodgins to the air, first down complete. Ezel, touchdown Atlanta. And what a response from the Empire. After conceding the touchdown, they take exactly one play to respond with six of their own. I think you looked up right here, there's gonna be a miscommunication in the coverage. It's gonna be a coverage bust. The only way someone would really get that open. And a good pass right there from the young phenom, Bailey Hodges to Lindy Ezel. Those cornerbacks are thinking run, 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 run. They sneak up, they sneak up, they sneak up. Then you drop one over the top of them from a touchdown. That's going to have an obviously effect in the passing game. It's going to make the defensive backs also come up slower versus the run. So the touchdown counts. Looks like it's a replay for the point after here. And unable to get the personnel on in the time. And Bills racked up her third touchdown of the night in the previous play. Ezel says, I see you. Now Lindsey Ezel with her third touchdown of the night as well. Right, right, right. This one too. Let me away. Point attempt, Hodgins to Salazar and able to get through even after the penalty. Salazar puts the Empire back on top by 12. This is a similar play to the one Austin scored on earlier in the first half. Running back lines up on the right, runs a little wheel route out to the left. No one picks her up out of the backfield and she goes in more or less untouched. Interesting. Running the ball all night, coming up with two great creative passing plays for their most recent touchdown. They have not had to take to the air very often, but when they have, they have been successful. The offense clicking on all cylinders tonight for the Empire. 60 seconds remaining in the third. Angel, first and 10, goes to the air, and this is dropped. Had her target, Ali Fan. 
and that is one she will no doubt want back. Kid, I've got that down as drop number four tonight for the Austin Sound. And Michelle Angel's thrown some good balls, got them to where they need to be. Needs a little bit of help from their wide receiver. You can see on her face, she's a little bit frustrated, and I don't blame her. Fan of one of those wideouts, Coach O said, needed to step up tonight in the absence of Daniels, and we will see if Rachel Washington is unable to join as well. She went out injured in the previous series. Complete to Bills across midfield, still on her feet. And Bills all the way down to the 15. When you need a first down, go to number three. When you see quarterbacks that are really comfortable, when they see the rush, they step up into the pocket like that right there. She gets her feet set, throws a dart to Bills. That's a very impressive play from that quarterback. In my opinion, Michelle Angel's the best quarterback I've seen so far in the X League, and it's plays like that that have led me to that decision. The fourth quarter coming up, Atlanta leading Austin 38 to 26. It's week four of the X League. Welcome back, start of the fourth quarter at Gas South Arena. The host, the Empire, leading the Austin Sound 38 to 26. Michael Vera trying to get his side on the same page, but they are at the point now, Lane, where they cannot afford to trade scores. They need to get a stop. They've got to get a stop or they've got to get a turnover next time they're on defense. That's going to be critical because they, quite frankly, only one turnover. It's the only stop they have of Atlanta's offense. They need points from this drive. Fan in motion. Angel, complete. Able to find Ali Fan for a short gain. Coach Overa talked a lot about crossing routes and end cuts. Here's another one. Ali Fan, good job right there. Loses her footing a little bit. Might have been able to get a few more yards. But number 11, middle linebacker Keon Harrison right there on the spot to make the stop. Coach praises her sure hands. A possession at wide receiver is the Minnesota native. Second and eight for Austin. A handoff, Sydney English nowhere to go. And she is gang tackled at the line of scrimmage. Keon Harrison first to her. Callie Stanley in to clean it up. Great play from the defensive front right here. I think you're going to have defensive end 99, Merrick Valdez, right there in the backfield, ready to make a great tackle for a loss. Good job staying at home. Good job. It's harder than you think, kid, to come in free unblocked and break down and make a tackle in space. That's a very good play from 99. It was indeed Valdez, part of that rookie defensive end pair. She and ZZ Green, the coach says they complement each other so well. Third and nine, Austin. Complete. And who else but number three, cash money, Cassandra Bill. She has come up aces for Austin, but will she be enough? Good route combination right here. That high motion runs straight up the seam, and Bills runs a little skinny post right into that space that was vacated by the safety. Good route combination. Good throw, good catch. Good job, good play call, Coach O. Coach Rivera takes a timeout. Okay. 8.26 so hey, remaining in the ballgame. Austin to trailing by 12. The field. I think with just a little over eight minutes left, I think one score from Austin helps. I think a stop right here is probably over. Third and nine. Maybe the biggest play of the game thus far, certainly for Austin. Angel steps up. Incomplete. Looking for Bills. Bills looks right at the official. Wanted a flag, won't get it. Yeah, the wide receivers, they always want a flag. <laughs> this ball, I think, is thrown over the opposite shoulder. Cassandra Bills was expecting it. She's got to do a little 180 in the air. That ball really wasn't that accurate. I think that was going to be hard, even if there wasn't a defender there for Bills to come down with that reception. He was a former defensive lineman. I don't believe that you've ever seen there is such thing as a defensive penalty. Yeah, it's bad enough. I'll give them their credit. I'm just, I'm going to err on the side of the defense. We gotta go. We gotta go. Okay. Good defense hey, right there. Crash? Good hey, defense. Yeah, there you hear don't it. throw that, bro. There you hear it. Lane Gray gets get the, the approval people. of no, my partner. A turnover on downs, and that brings Hodgins back out. 
12-point lead. We'll see if they elect to go back to the ground. They do, and Salazar again. Austin with four in, finally stopping the progress of number 39. And I think you're going to see a steady diet of the run right here. I think when you've got the lead, you've got a running game that's working this well. I think you're going to see Ezel and you're going to see Salazar over and over and over chip down on that clock and try to run it out. It's a two-score game right now for Austin anyway. Even if you don't score and you can flip the field, you're in good shape. Salazar able to pick up five, makes it second and very manageable and takes precious seconds off the clock. To the air goes Hodgins. Has Ziegler complete down to the 10-yard line. There's another example of an effective pass thrown against the defense that's playing run, run, run. The situation calls to run the ball and control the clock. So they dial up a deep pass right there. They catch him off guard. That's a very, very well-thrown ball between Hodgins and Ziegler. And I think we'll see that connection more and more as the season progresses. Former FGCU softball player for the Tampa native. Yes, yes, yes. Future Hall of Famer. Another big reception. Pitches out to Salazar. Salazar, yep. five yes. touchdowns. Yes, no one there. They thought they were going to take it up the middle. Jessica Salazar with her third touchdown of the ball game. And the defensive back right there that has to turn that play in. Looks like she's completely lost. Doesn't know where the ball is. That's number 11, Allie Fan. Not quite sure where her eyes were on that. If I was playing defense, I'd have my eyes on number 39. And I'm not saying the ball game's over, but it may be pretty close after that touchdown right there. What a crucial score from the Atlanta Empire. Under six minutes remaining. Salazar again gets the handoff and a hit behind the line of scrimmage. Number 71, Whitney Palmer puts a stop to that two-point conversion. And I do believe that's only the second tackle that Whitney Palmer has had today. She clearly runs her down all the way from the backside. Give a big uh, hats off to the center, number 13, Kayla Weller from Atlanta. Done a pretty good job handling Whitney Palmer, one of the league's better linebackers. She makes the play right there to win the battle, but I think the war is probably going to go to Atlanta on this. Wait, full credit to that offensive line of the Empire. They have come out and they have out-muscled Austin, something that's difficult to do. Absolutely. They've clearly been the most physical team on the field tonight. They've done it from the very first snap. Now Austin trailing and playing against the clock as well. Angel flushed out of the pocket, able to get away from Keon Harrison and picks up an extra few to shy of the 20. And you expect Atlanta right here, they're gonna rush two or three every time, but they probably got most of those defensive backs sitting deep and they're gonna give up five yard, 10 yard rushes all along. They just don't wanna give up that home run ball over the top because that quick score is the only thing that's getting Austin back in this game. Great pursuit from America Valdez, the former champion boxer from Albuquerque. Hand off, trying to find something. Washington back in. Good to see Rachel Washington back on after being taken off in the third quarter. Absolutely, she was getting work on the sideline, but it doesn't look like she's showing any signs of injury here. Good burst to the outside, good fake. Beating number 44, Nina Francis around the corner. Remember, if you hit the wall, you're still in until you get tackled. Good job with that extra effort. Angel. Second and two after the big run from Washington. Clock continues to tick down. Empty backfield, Angel tried to buy time, throws this one, caught, threw that one right in to Bills, and there were three defenders for Atlanta. Lucky Bills is there to make the reception. Man, Kit, that is a dangerous play from a quarterback on any level. Running opposite your throwing arm, that pass isn't gonna have much zip on it. You're throwing late, you're throwing in the middle. All of those are no-nos. Talking about an interception, but if you're Marcel Angel, you can get away with it. One of the best in the league. Very few can make that kind of pass. Not get intercepted. Second and four. 333 remaining in the ball game. Angel again, complete. Washington to the seven. 
This is a good adjustment in the air from Washington. She is a little bit slow getting up, but she makes a good adjustment spinning back to the inside. That ball is thrown a little bit behind her. If it's thrown in front of her, she might score on this. Because she's in a good spot, and that is not the sign that Austin wants to see. She's heading to the bench, and she has been, along with Cassandra Bills, their best weapon this evening. Took a big hit in the third quarter, was out for most of the third in the early part of the fourth quarter. Has come on for this drive and now back on the bench. The training staff again over to take a look at number 21 for the sound. First and goal, Austin. Angel, plenty of time directing traffic. Throws this one complete touchdown to who else but cash money, Cassandra Bills. Again, you've got two players that know each other very, very well. In this scramble situation, receivers got to work in the back of the end zone to help out their quarterback. You can see Michelle Angel directing traffic and a good response from Cassandra Bills running to that open area, getting a crucial score at this point of the game. Again, it's going to come down to can the Atlanta offense continue to impose their will which they have so far very successfully against that Austin defense. Two-point conversion, throws it up for grabs, and Austin comes down with it. Somehow, Austin, Alley fan, all five foot three inches of her, makes the grab on the two-point conversion, and Austin has cut it to a 10-point game. A minute 58 remaining in the ball game. Is there time? Can Austin mount the comeback on the road? Van with a miraculous grab at the two-point conversion. Welcome back. Two minutes remaining in the ball game. The X League home debut for the Empire here at Gas South Arena. Glad to have you with us here on Fan Pass. Hope you're enjoying this as much as we are. And what a week four matchup it has been. A marquee matchup. Top five game, but it has been the host. They got off early and they have been the better side. To have Atlanta. The handoff to Ziegler, bounces it outside. Ziegler up across the 20, good for the first down. Atlanta continues to impress with the ground game. Absolutely, they're able to run at will. They're able to pass when they need to, if they want to. Little trap play coming back to the inside. Good play on first down. Most importantly, got to keep that clock moving. They have made it a outstanding professional debut for the 18-year-old out of Canton, Georgia, Bailey Hodgins. Remember, she didn't come up with her first professional completion until the third quarter. She didn't need to. It was a steady dose of the run game by and large Giselle and Salazar. Another handoff is Atlanta looking to run out the clock and start the season at 1-0. And, oh. and you can see the big difference on this play. We just hadn't seen it from Austin. Watch the penetration the defensive line gets. They actually reset the line of scrimmage a little bit. And instead of 7, 8, 9, 10 yards, that one's only two. But it's too little, too late. Where was that for the first three and a half quarters of the game? They needed that from the first whistle, not the last minute and 20 seconds of the game. Courtney Palmer with the tackle. Christina Villalobos leading the charge on the defensive line for the sound. Atlanta, they had their game plan. They've executed it perfectly. Hurry, Vic, hurry, Vic, hurry, Ziggler Vic. in motion. Vic. Another handoff to Salazar. Gets away from an arm tackle. Can't get away from a second. Hit by Palmer for a loss. You've alluded to it already, Kit. This game plan, they have okay. executed it as well as a game plan has ever been executed in football you? tonight. Ezel and Salazar both in the backfield. It's going to be Ezel who gets the handoff, picks yeah, her way through. Baby. 15, 10, 5, <laughs> touchdown, Lindsey Ezel in the Empire. And when you get tired of tackling Thunder, they bring on the Lightning. Lindsey Ezel, you said it. Jessica Salazar, the Thunder. Ezel, the speed back, is the Lightning. Ezel with her fourth touchdown of the ball game. Again, more of the same. I think you have a very tired Austin defense. Maybe they've kind of checked it in a little bit. 
And Lindsay Ezel scoring up the sideline for yet another dominant run from this Atlanta Empire. Coming into this kid, I thought Austin was the team to beat. Right now, I'm not sure Atlanta's not the team to beat. They have made a statement here at home in their X League debut. Because Austin's a good team. Rare mistake from the rookie QB. Austin's a good team. We've seen them play LA. They played very good. They were busy physical. They're well coached. They have an extremely good quarterback. Now, one thing, at this point right now in the game, they're missing Pena running back. They're missing Chris Daniels and they're missing Rachel Washington. There's only seven players on the field. That's almost half of the starters injured and it's very challenging for any team to overcome those types of injuries. Two-point conversion. Backed up again is Hodgins takes to the air, and this one well off target. Weller closest to it for the Empire. So we'll say 50 to 34, Atlanta on top. 41 seconds remaining. And remember, Lane, we saw Atlanta back in week one they were playing as Kansas City. Kansas City will come online next season in 2023. That game obviously didn't count in the standings for Atlanta. And when you and I spoke with Dane Robinson about that game, a game that his team lost in overtime 40 to 34, he said, look, we knew that game didn't count. There are a lot of things we left in the playbook that we didn't want to show. We've seen those tonight. And absolutely, and they still put 34 points on the board in the game. It's not like they got run out of town. That game, as you know, went to overtime. It was a fantastic game, the most exciting one we've seen so far this year. But Atlanta is a force to be reckoned with. They look, they've impressed me tonight. I'll say that much. They certainly are. Angel, incomplete, bobbled. Bills, who else? The intended target, a rare incompletion that number three couldn't bring in. A lot of talk from Dane Robinson on his two defensive ends. Middle linebacker number 44, Nina Francis, has had a really solid game tonight, stopping those crossing routes from the Austin team. Francis, a great story. Francis, a former national team basketball player, not for the USA, but for Germany. Represented the German national team, a former flag football national champion as well, to give you an idea of her versatility. Sack, the pressure sack, coming, Valdez sack. applying it, and finally Keon Harrison there with the tackle. And Harrison didn't play in that first game. She is back and has made a huge difference in the middle linebacker as the Kansas City native. This closing speed right here is pretty impressive. She's sitting at home, reading the eyes, reading the eyes, reading the eyes, quarterback scrambles, and she's coming up like a cruise missile and attacking that quarterback. Gets a little anger taken out right there on the quarterback, Michelle Angel, letting her know, yep, I'm still around. There's 30 seconds left, but I'm still going to play hard. Dana Robinson says Harrison is the most underrated player in the league. Maybe a bit of a chip on her shoulder, and that is never a bad thing for a defensive player. Third and 10, Angel steps up, and this one it picked off Callie Stanley with the interception. Stanley, the Woodstock, Georgia native, was a high school teammate at Sequoia High School with Bailey Hodgins. Those two played together and shows off her defensive prowess. Gets the read on this one in the pick. And just quite simply undercuts that route. That ball's got to be thrown further to the outside towards the sideline. That ball's a little inside. And that's a great job stepping inside that for an interception. And that will surely seal the deal on this one. 21 seconds remaining. The home fans on their feet. A lot to cheer about tonight. At Gas South Arena. Remember, they will be back in action in week five, July 22nd. They head to the Rocky Mountains to take on the Denver Rush. Hey, we don't As start Atlanta kids. will go ahead hey, and we, take we a knee like victory we formation like for the Empire. We're what a performance here in front of the home fans. Very, very impressive. From the very first whistle to the very last whistle, Atlanta was the most physical team on the field. They imposed their will on Austin. 
who is still, I know they didn't play as good tonight, I still feel they're a very good football team. It's likely they'll well make the playoffs and maybe we'll have a rematch somewhere down the line versus these two teams. Well, we said it coming in, this may be a, pre, a playoff preview and that may well indeed be the case. But tonight, it's the Empire coming away victorious. Well, we thank you for joining us tonight. Week four of the X League from Gas South Arena in Duluth, Georgia. The home team comes away with a big victory for our entire X League crew. For my partner, Lane Grigg, I'm Kit McConaughey. Wishing you a good night, and we will see you in week five, the final. Atlanta Empire on top of the Austin Sound, 50 to 34. Atlanta, 1 and 0 to start the season. Austin, now 1 and 1 as we turn our sights to week 5.